Hi everyone, in this problem we have an infinite series and the question is determine if the series converges or diverges and if it converges we want to find the sum. So if you look at this it's pretty clear that if you just look at this piece here you have a number being raised to a power. So if, you, if it was just this it would be geometric. Likewise if it was just this it would also be geometric. So what we can do in this problem is we can break it up into two separate infinite sums. Let's write it as the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of the first term. So parentheses 0 0.8 to the n minus 1 minus the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of 0 0.3 and that's also to the nth power. So now we can use something called the geometric series test or simply GST. So the geometric series test says when you have a geometric series that looks like this, say a times r to the n, or sometimes books will use this one, a times r to the n minus one. And either of these is typically okay. Um, if you have something like this, and the absolute value of r is less than 1, then you have a convergent series. So you have convergence. I'll just put converges. On the other hand, if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, then in this case you have a divergent series. So it diverges. So in this case, this is our r, 0 0.8, and here our r is 0.3. So both of these are less than 1 in absolute value, so they're both going to converge. We just have to say that formally, right? If, we're, if, we're do, if you're doing this for like a class or something, or you're taking a test, you want to emphasize that. So I'll do it up here on the left. So for the first one, r is equal to 0 0.8, and then the absolute value of r is just the absolute value of 0 0.8. But that's just 0 0.8, and that's less than 1. So the first series converges by, it's really important to mention the test, the geometric series test. That takes care of the first one. Then we just do the same exact thing for the second one. So likewise, for the second sum, r is equal to 0 0.3. The absolute value of r is equal to the absolute value of 0 0.3, which is 0 0.3, which is less than 1. So same thing, so converges by the GST. And here's, here's, the, here's the really important part that it's important to mention. So the first one converges, the second one converges, therefore the difference converges. So thus the difference, when you subtract them, you also get a convergent series. That's really important. The difference also converges. So we have both of them converging, and so the difference converges, but the difference is equal to the original series. Therefore, our original series also converges. So now we just have to find the sum. So we have convergence. We've justified it very, very carefully using the geometric series test. Um, so just to find the sum, that's all that's left. So to find the sum, what we'll do is we'll use a special formula. The formula we're going to use tells us that you take whatever number is here and you just plug it in for your n. Just plug it in. And the result goes up top. So this will be 0 0.8. And just plugging in 1 here, we'll get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So we just get 0. Over, and then on the bottom, it's always 1 minus r. So your r here is 0 0.8, so 1 minus 0 0.8. Again, take this number, plug it in, write the result up top, divide by 1 minus r. Do the same thing here. Take this number, plug it in, so we get parentheses 0 0.3 to the first power over, and then on the bottom we have uh, 1 minus r. So this time it's 1 minus 0 0.3. Really, really powerful formula. And it's especially powerful because uh, oftentimes in textbooks you'll have one of these two formulas. You'll have the one with ar to the n or the one with ar to the n minus 1. 
So if you didn't have this technique, you'd have to rewrite this to make it match the formula. Also, uh, formulas in textbooks are dependent on where your sum starts. In this case, they both start at 1, but what if in your book it starts at 0, right? So, or what if it starts at 2? So this lets you circumvent all of the trickery needed in order to use those formulas. Just take this number, plug it in, put the result up top, divide by 1 minus r. Take this number, plug it in, put the result up top, divide by 1 minus r. 0 0.8 to the 0 power is 1, so we get 1 over, and then 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2, minus, and here we have, let's see, 0 0.3 over 1 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7. We could do all this by hand, or we could use calculators. You know what? Let's do it by hand. This is 1 over 0 0.2 is really 2 tenths, because the 0.2 is in the tenths place. So this is 1 over 2 tenths minus, this would be 3 tenths divided by 7 tenths. And again, you can just use the calculator, but I just feel like doing it the hard way. <laughs> uh, 1 divided by 2 tenths is really 1 times the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 tenths is 10, 10 halves minus 3 tenths divided by 7 tenths is really 3 tenths times the reciprocal of 7 tenths, so 10 sevenths. This is equal to, let's see, 10 over 2 is 5, 1 times 5 is 5, so we get the number 5, oh, a nice whole number, minus 3 over 7. And if we really want to continue our process of doing things by hand, we now have to subtract. So we want to write 5 as a number over 7. To do that, we can multiply by 1 in a very clever way. We can multiply by 7 over 7. So we get 7 times 5, which is 35 over, and there's really a 1 here, 7 times 1 is 7, minus 3 over 7. 35 minus 3 is 32. So we end up with 32 over 7. And that would be the sum of the infinite series. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.